it going? Stab Man coming back at you once again, and it's time, once again, to do some Christmas movie viewing. Oh, yeah. But I don't know if I uh, got the message across with Krampus. But this time, this year, this time around, I wanted to watch some movies that aren't necessarily your typical Christmas movie. I wanted to go a little bit out of the uh, norm here and see some movies that are kind of a, a bit of a rejection of your typical Christmas film. So that's why I've been watching movies like Krampus and movies like this. And I have to say, I absolutely love this movie that I'm about to show you. A lot of people hate it. A lot of people... I've seen the worst movie ever post on, uh, on IMDb. I even saw, apparently, there's a claim at least that the producer was on the IMDb forums defending this film tooth and nail against people who hated it, but apparently they may or may... If, they, if it was them, they deleted their posts after making all these ridiculous claims and basically feeding the trolls. <laughs> it was just like, what am I even reading? Did this actually fucking happen? Are you fucking kidding me? Don Murphy, did you actually fucking do this? Did you actually fall for the bait? Did you actually feed the fucking trolls? But whatever the case may be, a lot of people say this movie is crap, and I say they're fucking wrong. Because While She Was Out is a really good movie. It's, it's a Christmas movie, too. It's a Christmas movie. If you didn't know about that, this takes place on Christmas. It's a movie about Kim Basinger here plays a housewife, mother of two children, and it's Christmas Eve, and her husband is an abusive fucking dick who everyone should hate because he's a fucking asshole, and he deserves anything bad that may or may not happen to him, but I cannot confirm or deny that anything does happen to him, and I'm not suggesting that anything does. That being said... After he is done being his abusive, assholey self, she says she needs to go out and get some more wrapping paper for the gifts for the kids. It's Christmas Eve. She's got to go out and get some wrapping paper. Understandable. So she goes out to get some wrapping paper, and as she's walking up to the mall. By the way, if there's any one really big problem that I have with this movie, it's that. It's, I mean, it's a character flaw, really. It's not a plot hole. It's a character flaw. She's clearly from a rich community. Her husband is a fairly, a businessman of sorts. I mean, it's clear that her family is fairly wealthy. She drives a, well, one of the th little touches that I like is that her husband drives like a BMW and she drives a really crappy, it looks like an old uh, Ford Explorer, like a 90s Ford Explorer almost. I'm sure it's not. I'm sure it's possibly even a little bit newer than that. But I mean, it's clear that she's got the old crappy car and he's got the really nice upscale car, right? And I like that touch because it's very much a kind of like a making her out to be the one who is the housewife who has the allowance that she's given by her overbearing fucking husband. But even that, though that may be the case, they also set her up as being a character that is typical of a suburban housewife, but she's not necessarily experiencing the typical experience of the suburban housewife. Because not all suburban housewives are so poorly treated by their husbands. You know, that being said, she does do the same thing that you would expect a wealthy suburbanite housewife to do, perhaps even on Christmas Eve. I need to get some wrapping paper. I'm going to go to the Hallmark store in the mall to get some wrapping paper. Why go to the fucking dollar store and get it for a dollar? And I can pay 30 fucking dollars that I don't have to get at the fucking mall. It's exactly the kind of thing that you would expect somebody like this to do. So it's a character flaw that actually fits with the character that you're seeing in the movie. So if you start to think, oh, that's a plot hole, or oh, that's stupid, 
It is stupid, but that's part of her character flaw, all right? So just shut up. Okay. <laughs> now that we've gotten that out of the way, these things add depth, people. These things add depth to the character that you're seeing. If you don't want to accept the depth, if you don't see it as something that makes the character a little bit more nuanced and not flat, you know, then that's your own damn fault. You're the one blocking that out. That's the message I would get. I would try to get across to you on that. So, yeah, I, even at the very beginning, you're seeing kind of a bit of a nuance to her. And she, as she's walking to the mall, uh, she's walking across the street where she parked her car because there was no spar parking spots in the mall parking lot. So she walked across the street. Or she drove, she parked across the street in another parking spot parking lot and then she walked across the street and as she was walking across the street she saw a car that was parked in two spots in the mall parking lot and she left a nasty note one of those things you would expect a suburban housewife who has been treated like crap to do when she is met with this scenario because just anything that's just that one last little thing you need to get sent flying off the edge kind of thing. Thankfully, she doesn't go flying off the edge. This is the silent protest, so to speak. You write a stupid little note and leave it on somebody's car kind of thing. But that ends up getting her into trouble because the people who own that car are a bunch of wannabe fucking thugs and... Uh, she ends up uh, running... F I'm not going to give too much away, but I mean, if you watch the trailer, you're going to get this... She ends up running for her life from these fucking thugs on Christmas Eve. And there goes my fucking computer fan again. I, I do apologize. Probably gonna have to listen to that for the rest of this review. But yeah, I really love this movie because, I mean, it's not just the fact that the character is at least a little bit nuanced. It's not just the fact that it's Kim Basinger, who she's just an amazing actress and she really pulls off this role quite well. And it's also not the, necessarily the fact that Lucas Haas plays one of the uh, one of the main uh, thugs in the film. Lucas Haas you might remember as the kingpin from Brick. He's also played a lot of other roles. He's uh, been acting for a long time in Hollywood. He was a child actor, I believe, of, of sorts. You might also remember him from what is it? I think he was in Mars Attacks. He was, I think he actually played a character named Lucas in Mars Attacks. Or was it Mars Attacks? I swear it was Mars Attacks. Yes, it's Mars Attacks. Because he's the one that goes around with the, the song and kills, you know, I don't want to give too much away on that either if you haven't seen that. But yeah, he's that kid, if you remember that movie. He's that kid. You'll probably be able to put a face to him now, hopefully, if you don't already have a face to him. But yes. Lucas Haas, fantastic actor. This isn't his best role, but it's a cheap little indie movie, and I can't necessarily blame him for not necessarily being on top of his role here. But it did all right. He did a serviceable job. Everyone else in the film did not necessarily do very well. Uh, the other actors were fairly bland, but and actresses were fairly bland. But they weren't so bland as to be annoying or anything like that. They weren't annoyingly bad actors or actresses. They were just not necessarily doing a fantastic job. That being said, some of them you don't see for very long in the movie, so it's not that big of a deal. So this is about a woman who's running for her life from these thugs who want to... I mean, they have threatened to rape her. They have threatened to kill her. It's a really fucking dark movie for a Christmas movie. And I won't spoil it. I don't want to give too much away. But let's just say her character goes through a sort of an evolution in this film. Not necessarily the deepest evolution you've ever seen in a movie like this. But a pretty interesting and fun evolution to see because it's... If you're the audience member, if you're an audience member like me, it's the kind of evolution that you desperately want to see. You just, like, you're rooting for her. You're just, yeah, yeah. A lot of people compared this to movies like Straw Dogs, 
and they see that she's got like a toolbox here they call her the toolbox killer I seen that those two comparisons made on uh, on the IMDb forums toolbox killer and straw dog is most frequently uh, compared to uh, in this film here and they're fair comparisons to make but I think this stands on its own and those others aren't necessarily Christmas movies whereas this is this is this takes place on Christmas night and maybe that's not the deepest fucking difference in the world but it's nice whenever you can find a movie that isn't necessarily your typical Christmas movie but it fits anyways so that if you're not really feeling like watching your typical Christmas movie but somebody else wants to watch a Christmas movie you can maybe suggest something like this well this this is a Christmas movie it's like Die Hard right Die Hard's a Christmas movie but people don't think of it as a Christmas movie so this is another one you can add to your Christmas movies that don't necessarily feel like Christmas movies kind of thing and actually I feel like it does add a little bit of depth to the movie because it adds that feeling of like holy crap this is just a mother trying to get some Christmas wrapping paper home to her kids so that she can wrap her their their presents for them and put the presents under the tree and go to bed and see their faces light up on Christmas morning that's all she fucking wants and these assholes are trying to kill her for doing that it's just uh, you feel for her so much more I feel like because of that scenario because you throw that in there and the people who worked on this film Kim Basinger and uh, Don Murphy even and a bunch of the other people who worked on it I feel like a lot of them they knew what they were doing and they knew that they wanted to do something like this I think Kim Basinger took this on because she wanted to do a role like this she wanted to have a role like this in a movie where she wasn't just a female character that wasn't capable you know this is a female char character that is capable that is strong and I wonder whether or not that's why people didn't like the movie I don't know for sure but it seems like anytime you see a female character that is capable of kicking some ass and is stronger than the male characters around her in a movie and smarter than them that suddenly all the male horror fans out there, especially if it's a horror movie, obviously. It's not necessarily a horror movie. It's more of like a thriller, if you ask me. But regardless, seems like whenever you get those male fans out there, they don't want to see a female who has power. They want to see a female having power taken away from her. And that's a problem. It's a big fucking problem with those audiences. So... I feel like a large reason, one of the biggest reasons that this gets unfairly shit upon is because of those audiences, those sexist fucking audiences. And some of them don't even realize they're doing it. Some of them don't even realize the reason they don't like this is because she's a female with power. And if that's your reason for not liking it, you have a problem, not the movie. Okay? That's all I'm going to say. But yeah, uh, really fucking good movie. Surprisingly good. I watched it a, a couple of years ago, shortly after it came out, on Netflix. It's not on Netflix anymore, which is why I got the Blu-ray. But uh, yeah, I did watch it on Netflix back in the day. And, well, I say back in the day. It was like five years ago or something like that. And I thought it was a pretty good movie. I gave it like a 6.5 out of 10 or something like that. Having seen it now on Blu-ray for a second time, I mean, it gets better with age. I can't believe I'm saying that, but while she was out, it actually gets better with age. And I have to say, this is more like a 7.5 out of 10 for me. It's actually a really freaking good movie. And a lot of people contributed to making it happen. The executive producers on list on this is almost a fucking mile long and includes names like Guillermo del Toro, for crying out loud. So... I mean, if you don't believe me on this, you just give this a chance. You really, if you haven't seen it yet, you should definitely give it a chance. If you like things like American Mary, you will probably fucking love While She Was Out. So, yes, highly, highly, highly recommend this. If you are looking for a Christmas movie that isn't your typical Christmas movie, that's more 
horror oriented or thriller oriented and definitely goes off the rails in a different way that is different from what most Christmas movies do while she was out is an excellent option so yeah that will do it for my review thanks for watching you guys catch you later peace